This video is being sponsored by Algo Expert, which is a great portal wherein you can find coding and review problems on arrays, binary search trees, graphs, and a lot of more topics. And people have been using this product. They are really super happy to get jobs in really huge tech brands. The root product is basically strengthened by the video explanations that they have, which is quite crisp and clear, especially for beginners. So guys, check out algoexpert.io slash Rajit to know more and get your 30% off. Hey guys, this is me Rachid and welcome to yet another video. Today I want to talk about C++ productivity tips. In this video, I will be primarily talking about what you can use to save a lot of time while you prepare for coding interviews. So these are some of the tips and tricks that I feel are pretty useful that I've learned over the years. And I think they are very, very time saving when we are preparing for coding interviews because it, it is a time investment thing where you spend a lot of time uh, I would say hours and days and uh, solving problems really takes time so to save some time I will be sharing these tips uh, and I hope this helps like writing for loops reading numbers this this takes time right and um, so so yeah so the main intent that I want to uh, focus over here is that don't like uh, just get, let me get rid of this smiley face first uh, okay i will just add a visibility collapse and yeah so the main intent that i want to focus today is um i mean that c++ productivity tips but just make sure that you don't use in coding interviews you use them only uh while preparing for them like uh debugging tools are also not present in most of the coding interview platforms so i'm definitely sure you'll find some of the new tips like really useful but before using them in front of a uh, interviewer uh, I would like suggest you to use the standard syntax that exists. Okay, so let's say we have two integers and in some scenario we have to print them and let's also put some values in them like 100 and maybe 200. So right now if we print them, it, it will work fine. We'll get uh, 100 in the first line and 200 in the second line. So yeah, let's quickly check that. And yeah, this is pretty much expected. But um, like when we are debugging it's kind of not that useful like you have to remember what you printed first and this is where uh, this hash x focus on that what this will do is like really beautiful so uh, now if i run the program again you will see something really really shocking uh, oh it's still same it's actually shocking to me <laughs> okay i have not used it actually so let me quickly use it uh, dev x and dev y and then maybe we can get rid of the two lines and just to iterate again id1 has a lot of shortcuts and that's it's online editor so i really love it like i re replicated the same line like really so easily and fast so now let's quickly run this and we also have shortcuts to delete lines i'm not going into details of shortcuts because i just want to cover things related to c these things are like uh, id based as you can see x 100 y 200 i think this is very useful when we are debugging even in coding interviews i think this is something which you can use um, this will like really help you a lot but um, just make sure before using in front of interviewers like take it with a pinch of salt uh, i would say okay now i think this is pretty cool uh, this hashtag x really really useful tip for debugging okay all right what's next now uh, maybe we also have to read these two numbers so maybe we can do c in cx uh, c in x and y and maybe we have a lot of other variables as well like z and double z sorry for the bad naming i should have started with w okay so one two three four these are the phone numbers that we have to read and as you can see i'm really using the duplicate line shortcut so yeah now if we run this we should see x y z and z red values as one two three and four working great perfect now uh, i think this is also something which you can make a bit better like when you have to read lines uh, read multiple things uh, you can do something better so hash uh, sorry we don't have to use a macro we have to basically use a function Le like let's declare one function read it takes like multiple arguments that's what this triple dot signifies c++ is like improving every day guys so it's good for us to be uh, to stay updated so now if i run this of course you will get an compilation error because life is hard and it says the int contains um, args was not declared in this scope right that's what is saying so what's the problem over here can you find this out 
all right i think most of you might not be aware of this but uh, to use such syntax like it really works well with templated functions so i'm declaring that this function is a general function and it works with t um, why am i getting an error right now let me check guys give me a second all right so i will have to wrap this up in a uh, parenthesis so that's one statement that it has to receive so now if i will run this it should compile i think awesome so guys uh, what this will do is basically read these four numbers like it can read n numbers if you have to read from the standard input and that's what i am demonstrating to you right now um now uh, if i quickly run this it should not work yeah as i was expecting it was uh, it's not working because uh, while we are reading we have to pass them by reference and this ampersand ampersand sign will do that now if i quickly compile and run the program we should be back to one two three and four awesome guys it's working all right this looks good similarly we can have a write function which will do the same thing it will print n variables to the standard output and we'll have to replace this c in by c out and probably add a space all right so um, let's also print these and z z yeah now if i run this um, let's run this awesome we are getting one two three and four i i really like this syntax now <laughs> right um this is pretty cool what's next what's next yeah so we have for loops and um we write something like this a standard for loop and um maybe we ha we have i and n as uh, like we read the like basically we read so many times arrays right and we have to write this for loop and then see in r i where we can have a vector instead of normal array because it's good so i have declared uh n sized array with all zeros and i am doing the read for that of course it won't work right now uh, sorry I was expecting some different thing uh, okay so vector is not defined again to save some time let's uh, include bits standard C++ dot H um, it will take care of all the includes that we need to do works like a charm but uh, some additional cost of compilation time that increases so um, I think th I just mentioned that because I thought that when you're using it you should know in case the interviewer asks why you are using bit standard C++. All right, uh, okay, so I'll have to first specify the array in the input, so five and maybe 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. So I have, uh, basically I'm now reading an array of size five, all are tens, they should work, and maybe we can also uh, write this array to standard out. So again, we'll have to write that for loop, I'm lazy, so I duplicated that and uh, as you can see now I can also shuffle lines in ID1 like just alt and up and down key it can basically move lines up and down again guys shortcut keys I think I can have a separate video on shortcuts if you want because that's also helps a lot in productivity but this video is specifically for C++ okay so um, printing the array uh, space separated and then uh, end line after that so we get five tens uh, yeah th that's that's what you're getting so this is a bit irritating i think right this for loop writing again and again and again uh, we have shortcuts to basically that uh, to shuffle between the for loops again that's i think i can do a separate video for that but i think if we use something like this it's quite beautiful and time saving right what do you think guys i think this is time saving so to have that functionality let's define one macro again has defined for i comma n for i equal to zero i less than n and i plus plus awesome again we can have something better like sometimes we have to run a for loop from not zero but some starting point up to some n so i have added all uh, two macros for and capital f o so let's quickly demonstrate both of them. I can be probably do this one comment plus one and uh, the here I minus one just to make this work. So I'm demonstrating both the macros that I've just created. And if I run this, um, it sh it's still working. Awesome. So I thought um, this might be some of the things wherein most of the time goes and using this and of course you can improvise on this a lot, but this was just to get you started with what you can do it has tremendous opportunities to play around and do stuff like you can also print strings over here right um, oh sorry you can also print strings over here and also like doubles maybe 4.0 or something and if you still run this like it will shock it's actually shocking that you get so great results um, uh, <laughs> 
whenever say shock i actually get shocked uh, oh okay i think when we copied the right function uh yeah yeah I'm, I'm pretty much sure it's about that so when we copied the right function from the read function yeah we don't have to pass by reference now guys because now we are not doing anything so we can remove that ampersand sign yeah yeah so let's get rid of this and now if we run this should work but um i think it can still work if we use double ampersand again uh, i don't want to get into much detail so i will just probably write down as a comment which is like r value reference if you are interested go ahead and read yeah it's still working so it's called r value reference it's quite new to c++ and if you are interested you can go ahead and look that up so i think this uh, this sums it up guys uh, probably i will copy all this to my github repository as you can see um, just for your reference you can see the c++trix.cpp file and i can probably add the id1 link also over here so uh, just edit and paste that over here the id1 link guys uh, oh sorry i have copied the source code okay let me just copy the link for this id1 so that you can use it for reference just by clicking on it and again guys everything is in the video description uh, let me get back to the github repo and yeah so you can use this for reference purpose and i think i can also paste the same code that i just demoed to you okay so i will probably do that as well so again guys um all the the source code you can refer f uh, from my github repository as well as from the video description and um i think that's that's all i had for this video uh let me know in comments what do you think about this and um if you want more such content like just let me know in comments and watch the other videos over here and i will see you in the next one